Jae Hyun knew that there was no way out for him, that he couldn't back down, that he only had to go forward. Yu Sung Yoon approached her security guard and told him to prepare the documents. The guard was shocked because he didn't expect her to use such a method as a cube. He told her that even the magic raiders were hard at dealing with it, but the guy who was standing in front of them was just a teenager. Yu Sung Yoon just smiled, and she said that he probably wasn't one of the normal teenagers, so she thought it was worth a try. The guard had no choice but to press the button that activated the mana cube. Before our protagonist, something like a portal opened. He had heard about this item even before time transfer. But of course, he had never seen it in person. Its magic power was simply monstrous. But the only thing Yu Sung Yun did was wish him luck. So at the same moment, as soon as he exhaled, Thor walked confidently forward. The guard said that he was a little worried, even though he understood the interest of the chairwoman, but in turn, Yu Sung Yun said that he will succeed because she just feels it. How long will it take him to get out of the cube? That's the question. At the same time, as soon as he entered the cube, he noticed that he was in a sea of mana. The only thing he was afraid of at that time was poisoning himself with it because it is a disease that develops as a result of prolonged exposure to magical forces. But mana in that world is like oxygen. Without it, it is simply impossible to use a skill or skills. But if you overdo it, your lungs and heart can fail, which will lead to certain death. So he didn't want to waste any time, because it is possible that the symptoms of poisoning have not yet appeared. His main goal at that time was to find a way out, because if memory serves, then there is only one way to get out of the cube. You need to find the doors that are connected to the outside, inside the endless whirlpools. He dared to concentrate, began to feel the waves of energy, because the path definitely lay among them, and it was he who would lead him out. At the same time, he felt something strange. He noticed that in one of the whirlpools, there was a crystal with incredibly magical power. And at first from there, it seemed to contain all the power of this place where it was located. While our protagonist continued to search for a path to his exit, the guard continued his dialogue with Yu Sung Yun. He still couldn't believe that such a small boy as our character could get out of there. It seemed to him that it was too much, but imagining what he did just recently, more precisely cured him of Yu Sung's son, asked him how long does such a test even take. Yu Sung Yoon replied that it took her 40 minutes personally, which is the best result in the country. So the security guard said that he had two options, either he won't get out at all, or they will set a new record. Yu Sung Yoon also thought that way, and the guard hoped so. So when they looked at the cube, they didn't notice that it was starting to break, it was cracked. The security guard looked at his phone and realized that only 10 minutes had passed and a crack had opened in the cube. So what was going on inside it at all? Within the cube, our protagonist continued his approach towards the crystal, which emitted an intensely powerful energy. This was likely the cube's core, as destroying it could potentially provide an exit without needing to search for one. He grasped the crystal and shattered it, instantly gaining a new passive skill called Mana Control Essence. This action left everyone outside astonished, as typically only 7% managed to escape, with the process taking about 3 hours for normal raiders, 2 hours for rank ones, and an hour and a half for S ranks. However, our hero accomplished this feat much quicker than anyone before him. Despite the previous record of 36 minutes, set by Camilla from the European Union, a prodigy in magical practices, Jay Hewen broke that record by a full 26 minutes. A security guard rushed to him exclaiming in disbelief that he had completed the task in just 10 minutes. Yu Sung Yoon approached as well, inquiring how he managed to exit so rapidly. Jae Hyun simply replied that he found a crystal inside and broke it. This revelation further shocked Yu Sung Yoon, as the crystal mana cube is a container for all the magical space's energy, which ordinary awakened individuals can neither locate nor destroy. She realized that if the person before her could break it, his mana must greatly surpass the cube's energy. Turning away with her hair blowing in the wind, Yu Sung Yun declared that in the name of the Lotus Guild, and on her word of honor, she would teach him, clearly pleased with the outcome. 
At this juncture, we observe both our protagonist's girlfriend and mother standing at his house's entrance, awaiting his return due to his unresponsiveness to phone calls. Suddenly, Jay Hewen emerges from an expensive black car, shocking everyone present. His mother even suspects he might be involved in illicit activities. Upon entering, Jay Hewen immediately confides in his girlfriend, explaining his decision to switch from martial arts to magic class. Having completed training and signed necessary documents, he expresses his dissatisfaction with the military class. His girlfriend is perplexed, recalling her recent assertion about magician's lack of future prospects. She wonders if he's feverish or mentally unstable. Jay Hewen dismisses her concerns, stating that people, like millions, can alter their decisions at any time. Yugen begins to question if he chose the magic class solely for his mother's sake, despite his magical talent, reminding him of the unprofitability and energy demands of being a magician. She reiterates his past statements about Raider Warrior's employment difficulties due to high injury risks and employer's reluctance to cover costs, which was meant to support his mother. Jay Hyoen interrupts this conversation, more interested in their plans at his house, as her parents are away on another business trip. The girl mentions she's just visiting, but he suggests she stay the night, which he appreciates given the small size of their apartment. We learn that Kim Yu Jung is the only daughter of a wealthy business family involved in processing and selling monster remains globally. Her parents frequently travel for work when new monsters appear, leaving Kim Yu Jung often alone. Their families are close friends, making her overnight stays common. Jae Hyun asks her to teach him magic basics, to which she agrees, but decides to think about what he should do for her in return. After consideration, she tells him to fulfill any wish she has, threatening not to teach him otherwise. Jae Hyun agrees, but limits the deal to one year thinking she'll likely forget. He teases her about her facial expression, wondering if she's thinking of something vulgar. In response, she playfully hits him with a pillow. Jay Hewen's mother calls them for dinner, and their interaction turns into pure fun. Jay Hewen appears to be enjoying himself, smiling and having a good time. Meanwhile, Min Seong, the protagonist's father, continues dealing with monsters. He's praised for his effective monster handling making their reign easier. The Scarlet Guild offers him membership, promising a strong alliance, but Min Xiong Oh declines. Despite the Guild representative's persistence in offering comforts, Min Xiong Oh expresses his weariness of human greed. He uses a skill that binds the man with invisible chains, blurring his vision. In an instant, Min Xiong Oh vanishes, leaving the Guild representative bewildered about his whereabouts. Jae Hyun adopted a fighting stance, positioning his left foot forward and lowering his shoulders as much as possible, mimicking a warrior's combat posture to easily evade attacks. He leaned in to throw a punch, but Yu Sung Yoon effortlessly blocked it. Jae Hyun was astonished that he couldn't land a single hit. Despite being a healer, the S rank raider was in a completely different league. Yu Sung Yoon observed that Jae Hyun was still clinging to his warrior habits and pointed out that a magician shouldn't recklessly charge forward. Yu Sung Yoon explained that every magician is a raider who weakens opponents from afar before delivering the finishing blow. If a magician engages in close quarters combat, they'll quickly fall due to their low defense. Following her explanation, Yu Sung Yoon assumed a stance and prepared to attack, demonstrating how a magician should fight. The woman concentrated mana in her index finger. She then unleashed a powerful attack, which Jae Hyun managed to dodge. Jae Hyun immediately activated his lightning chain skill and counterattacked. Yu Sung Yoon remained motionless as Jae Hyun's attack approached. Just as Jae Hyun thought his strike would be devastating, Yu Sung Yoon suddenly appeared beside him. Yu Sung Yoon cast Magic Arrow, striking Jae Hyun, and remarked that even the best skill is useless if it can't hit its target. Surprisingly, Jae Hyun was still able to stand after receiving Yu Sung Yoon's attack. The woman had reduced her magic power, but she hadn't expected Jae Hyun to remain standing. Yu Sung Yoon then cast multiple magic arrows simultaneously. Refusing to give up easily, Jae Hyun employed his universal derivation skill to counter Yu Sung Yoon's magic spell, which astonished her. 
Unexpectedly, Jae Hyun's lightning chain emerged from underground, prompting Yoo Sung Yoon to swiftly neutralize it with protective magic. Yoo Sung Yoon was amazed by the speed of Jae Hyun's magic, especially considering it came from an untrained novice. What astounded him even more was Jae Hyun's ability to cast magic without using spells. For magicians, spells typically accompany casting as a rule. While high level magicians could cast silently at the cost of spell power, Jae Hyun was still a magic beginner. This fact stunned Yoo Sung Yoon the most. At this point in the fight, Jae Hyun had depleted most of his mana and grew frustrated that none of his attacks were effective. Yoo Sung Yoon turned and commented that Jae Hyun was full of surprises. Before Jae Hyun could react, Yoo Sung Yoon passed right under him and turned him right on the floor. He fell straight onto his back, which made him stare at the ceiling. Yoo Sung Yoon walked over and leaned over him. Thank you, because did he really think that he could beat her? Jae Hyun pondered how he had failed to notice that final attack, realizing the vast difference between himself and the S-rank raider. Yoo Sung Yoon was highly impressed by Jae Hyun's fighting style, which combined close combat experience. Like a warrior with the ability to cast spells without incantations, and rapidly decompose magic. After observing Jae Hyun's technique, Yoo Sung Yoon declared that there was a unique fighting style, suited only to Jae Hyun, which likely only he could master. Yoo Sung Yoon then instructed Jae Hyun to address him as teacher from that point on, and congratulated him on becoming his first disciple. At that moment, our hero was busy with his own activities, while Kim Yoo Jung sat beside him persistently making him listen to her, while she constantly ate ice cream, which annoyed him a lot. They were discussing magic and she kept giving him lessons, explaining through drawings that there were combat, strengthening and healing magics, but she only mentioned the main types at this point. As they reviewed, Jae Hyun's magic proficiency increased by a full 5%. He realized that the system sent him notifications whenever he made progress, as if it was happy with his achievements. However, he was frustrated that Kim Yoo Jung kept belittling him, saying he didn't seem to be from a martial arts class, since he learned spells in two days that typically took over a month to master. Our hero asked her not to be surprised, because she herself had learned it all in three days. Yet, she found another reason to criticize him, telling him to call her teacher, since she had started studying magic before him, and believed he would soon catch up to her but he believed he was just naturally gifted and couldn't help it, especially since his life was on the line. Kim Yoo Jung, grabbing another ice cream, expressed surprise that he chose a martial arts class, questioning why he would bury his talent when the magic class was in higher demand. 